Okay, um, if there are no more questions, and it seems most people are already here. Um, let's continue with the lecture. Uh, yes. So, um, the last time we still uh, looked into uh, C++ and classes in general, we also already had some experience with, with templates. So, I think what now would be interesting for today uh, will be two things that we will take a look on. First will be um, operators in more detail. So I already showed you operators that you can create them and how they work, but it would be probably good to make a dedicated uh, a demo project that demonstrates a few use cases for operators. And the next thing that probably is also quite interesting uh, will be a general uh, walk through all the different uh, container type objects as provided by the standard template library since they are very commonly used and also very useful in various own projects. So uh, let's create a new project. I knew. <sighs> it's called operators. Okay. And for starters, I would say we start with creating. So you you might have noticed, for example, here that. By default, the created um, Hello World application that is always auto-generated has this strange thing. So, what we are using, what it uses here, is basically we are repurposing a uh, bit shift operator to use it to output text to the console. So now, if if you run this simple example, what it simply does is it prints the text hello world and you can and they chose to do it this way because it allows you to concatenate um, multiple strings uh, in one line you could also use uh, non strings so it is quite flexible that the, the whole mechanics behind this simply is based on Effect the operator. So as you see, it just concatenated everything. And uh, this concatenator is uh, sorry. This operator is uh, implemented for all the different uh, types that one might might encounter. And I think we should try to replicate uh, this thing manually. So it's not really that difficult to implement an own class that would um, provide this functionality. Um, and then we will also take a look on more mathemat on mo on the mathematical operator. So I don't think we will write a full integer implementation or something, but at least a few simple operators would probably be good to also um, see how to implement them. Especially given that uh, part of the final project will contain the use of operators. So let's start. Uh, we have some unnecessary includes. Um, oops. Yesterday, you huh? Oops, you put huh? Yesterday, lib on string. That should be all we need. We don't need that. So we just create a class. Let's call it see my console. We make it a public class, uh, so we make a public constructor, so that it can be created from anywhere. But we don't really care for the content since we will be just using it um, to call a few functions. And now let's add a few operators. So cons. Um, so operators usually return um, the result of the operation, and um, many operators that work on the current uh, object will return itself as a reference. Like here, and let's say const um, charge times. Uh, we can define this operator as const, meaning that it it will not change the cu current object, which would in usually not be the most common use case. But in this particular implementation, it's exactly what we need. Print f, constant s, uh, comma, uh, store, strich punkt. And then we just copy this a few times. 
mm, and implemented um, for different types. So what else do we want? Two, 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 int in number. Oops. Then we probably want to have some float a uh, double number and maybe a float as well let's change to those pot and e pot and f pot and f okay okay um That should be enough. We don't need more in here, at least not for now. Let's now use it simply. So we just need to create um, an object of this type. Um, my console, my console. And we can now, the same way as it was working with the STD provided object write our own strings or numbers or doubles into the console so if we run it you will see that this will just generate as the other one just a concatenation of all the um, different types and what we could do now um, as another example is for example to implement a own simple uh, string class on which we will implement a few operators for example um of course uh, assignment assignment operator to to make to allow you to um assign types to each other then i would also go for the plus is equals uh, plus and equals sign operator which will be used for ca concatenation to the existing string and the normal plus operator to just concatenate two strings and return a new string as a result um for simplicity reasons, we can uh, <laughs> just use an existing string class uh, to hold the data since this demo is more about how to use um, operators rather than about how to implement uh, properly a own uh, custom string. So, my string. so we will be cheap with how we implement it. Oh, let's go with private. Ah, okay, we need an include additional include. Um, so just string and string h is not the same. So string h is just uh, string stuff like mem copy, string copy, string length for c. While just string is the uh, STL version. So it's for C plus plus and then con it contains all the useful string classes and other things. Of course if we would go for a um, more advanced demo we would then try to write really an own string but I think for now it's fine to just reuse the existing one and later we can still if we want to upgrade our demo to to, to be more um, well more self-made. Uh, what else do we want? Okay we would go with some copy constructor as well. So const um see my string reference uh, other and m large d well, let's, let's change it here quicker to type um other m should then be protected. Um Data. Is it complaining? Ah, that's not the pointer. I've also that should not be complaining because this should be fine. Yeah, no, it's not complaining. Okay, then we need um a constructor which takes a string as a uh, char array, so const stern 
and since the, inter the string implementation uh, from SCD already has this constructor we can just assign char to our SCD string and it will do the right thing automatically um, yeah, and then we should add a destructor but we will not use it for anything <coughs> since um, the SCD string has already a built-in destructor that also cleans up everything fine so that much about that now let's go with the <coughs> actual interesting things the operator so um, let's step it down from the basics that's a nice thing one thing about operators that is quite peculiar is that they always uh, return or well not always but I they either return a copy of itself or a reference to itself they rarely have uh, void or no return type uh, which obviously makes sense although one could have thought that um, they if you just have an assignment operator or other operators that they would allow you to skip some typing because the only reasonable scenario for such a mechanics is where it returns a reference to itself um, there would not really be a reasonable use case where you would want to return a new object if what you, j what you did right now was to assign um, something else to the current object ok so we have the assignment operator then we can copy it and make the uh, plus assignment operator out of it. Um, yeah, okay, let's also still keep what we are missing one operator that we will add later. So, first we add the operators which just uh, oper uh, operate with normal chance, and then we will copy it and change it such that we will um, operate with an instance of what we already have. So as you see everything is for now quite simple so we don't have um, many con why is that complaining um, pu pu pu. okay this. Ah, sorry. Um, no, but this is fine. This needs to be data. Um, yeah, well. Good. Now the plus operator that which we can again make as a copy, and we do it for both. So let's copy this one. Oops. Let's copy this one and that one. Um. And the plus operator here does no longer return a reference, but it returns actually a copy. So we need to generate a copy internally, uh, which we then can return. Mm -hmm. Let's call it. And one thing here that makes the whole thing less efficient is that uh, if we don't use something um, like a copy on write uh, mechanics, uh, then uh, we will end up um, copying a lot of data because well we enter this operator then here we copy the whole string then we append something to this string and when we return it the resulting thing will again be copied into some memory that is prepared before the, the operator call so we have at least one unnecessary uh, copy operation that we would ideally uh, try to avoid but this as said would require us to implement some sort of um, copy and write mechanics which I can show you later how to do um, ok we have the plus operators do we want need anything else <laughs> could add a comparison operator so that we can compare um, but let's first test what we what we've done so far so we can comment this out but we should at least add one more function as uh, something um, to get the content of our string get c star which just oops, returns for now 
the C string that we have internally. Okay, so uh, we create a new instance of our string. We don't need to initialize it. We can then um, let's say this equals one, two, three, four. Then we can make plus. Five, six, seven, eight. Then we go with, and uh, we can use our console. Um, my string. And actually, so this now is complaining because there is no shift operator implemented for the my string type. But if we move this here uh, and have the type, then we can implement it here. Okay. Punkt get okay, and it should be, be more performant. Const reference, and here is the empty argument list missing. Um, why is it still complaining? Ah, because we uncommented that as well. <coughs> and now, if we run it, it will okay. Did I forget to return a value? Yes, I did. Complaining so m data we have char asterisk and it returns as const char. And okay, that did not went as planned because this needs to be an S. Um, yeah, well, it's a yeah, voila. And now, of course, we can uh, have another string. Let's say it, co it says my string two, and it just equals nine. Uh, it of course needs to be a string, and then we can write my string one plus two. Uh, we I don't think we need a square. We need brackets. I think the priority of operations is that it first does the plus and then does the bit shift. But uh, oops, but it somehow did not. Um, interestingly that the plus didn't fail, or we have a bug in the code, we will see that in a minute. Nope, there is a bug somewhere, it should have concatenated those two. So we are here. Okay, let's step through it, step by step. I said I don't think we need the bracket, so let's just see. Sorry? Oh! Oh yes, of course it is. Thank you very much. So we actually don't need to step through it, let's just run it. Yeah, so as I think I mentioned already multiple times, copying and pasting code to save on work is very <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> because it's easy to, to miss such small things and then you only find it, uh, find it out during testing. Uh, but any... yes? Which part? Okay, so we create a, a class. We have an empty constructor that just doesn't do anything. Internally, that will call the constructor of mData, but we don't write it since it's done automatically by the compiler. And then we have two constructors which allow us to initialize a value directly with a value without making additional copy operations. So, like this is inefficient, it would be better to to do uh, it like this, because now we are using our constructor. So here we can initialize it with a value directly, then we have the destructor which doesn't do anything except calling the destructor of mData internally, which we don't need to write by hand since the compiler does this for us. And then here we implement the various operators which we require. So the first one is the assignment operator, which allows us to assign something of type const char asterisk to an object of type cm cmy string, which we, for example, use here. So here we use the assignment operator, and what it does is it takes the string and it just assigns it to our internal 
data storage, which since it is already a full full blown string class, can be as simple as just uh, assigning it directly. Internally, of course, this will co call another assignment operator of this m data object, which then will internally allocate memory. Uh, first of all, it will check the size of the string, then it will allocate memory for it, then it will um, assign the data, and then it will uh, be done. Um, but as I said, for the demonstration purposes, initially we will just go with using the standard uh, template library provided string object. Then we have another operator which is plus and assignment, which we also use here. So this allows us in one line combine. Oops. So this is equivalent to this is equals this plus. Uh, and to be more verbose, it's equivalent to to this. Um, well, actually, we we can we can do both. So, if we would not have a plus equals operator for character, and only a plus equals operator for another um, semi string, uh, the compiler would actually here. Uh, generate an in internally a co a object um, of type C my string. Use the right constructor to initialize it with the initial value, and then uh, may perform the operation using this operator, which takes a C uh, my string type of object. But since we have uh, a operator for for character for normal char strings then we can save on some computation. So this is the next thing here. They are the same operators as here, just that they take a different type. They take um, the C my string object instead of a normal C string. And finally we have two operators which just allow you to concatenate two strings uh, but do not alter the existing string. Actually you can even say that they are const because as I said they are not changing the string which which we have currently at hand. Is it clear now, or should I, should I explain something again? Okay. So, uh, what we can do, since this is quite interesting, we can mm, go step by step through this operation, and then compare it how it behaves with and without an operator for the type that we want to assign. So here. As you see, we just go directly with one call to our okay, we have a jump table in between uh, to our assignment operator, and then it just does the assignment. Um, then it does something that we don't care for. This check for debugger is irrelevant. Um, here it assigns, and then it returns. Um, a memory address and once we are done with that zack um so we did the what was it yeah we are already done with this and can continue with the next uh instruction but if we would uh not have this operator here which one was it this one no this one then it would be much more convoluted because then we would first need to create a intermediate object. So as you see, now we have here much more operations. And if we step through it step by step, we see that first we have a constructor call to create a new object because we somehow need to make this uh, C string into a C my string. And th the compiler by default, if it finds um, a direct way to to make a cast, it will then create the object. W use the value we have as a parameter for the constructor and then it will invoke the other operator which then takes the type that it can take so here we have a few more operations and then in the end we also need to call the destructor so it's so we make basically three function calls instead of just one but of course it whether you want this or not will really depend on um how much you expect these operations to impact the general performance of your program so uh, for example it might be a much more friendly solution to not implement any operators for any type other than uh the own type and then instead 
uh, just let the compiler always to create a temporary object. Of course, as I said it it has bad performance, but um, it saves you on writing code. And if you know that this particular functionality will be only used very rarely, then it is justifiable. Also, if you would say that okay, I don't support just let's say two types, but twenty, then if you would want to make um, comparison operator, assignment operator, a plus assignment and some other operators. I mean if, if you would have at least an, uh, to some extent also numeric uh, machine types like the various integer types and you would have um, quite a lot of operations um, and a lot of code to write so it might be a better strategy to just um, go with letting the compiler do the com conversion even if it's more inefficient. Um, at some uh, be because at, at some point the amount of com combinations will will just be too big um, to be easy to implement. Of course, if you are like a, a large team of programmers and you just hire an intern and let him do that, do it, <laughs> then um, this is also a good solution. Uh, I don't think that the compiler actually, even when optimizing, would be really smart enough to be able to optimize this uh, creation and destruction of an object away. So it, it might do some optimizations, but it will not go as far as uh, realize internally that he, that it, he could in some way um, streamline this whole operation uh, as far as it as it a, as far as it would not require any um, temporary object creation. So this is unfortunately not really possible. Although possibly in a few <laughs> ten years, some AI-based uh, optimizers will be able to really um, do such things. So uh, I would just recommend to write code which is readable, and having thirty operators for slightly different types is performant, but it does not really make for a readable code. So um, let's leave those here commented out for now and let's add some more operators. So other operators we can do uh, is for example a comparison operator so boolean uh, so it returns a value of type boolean because it returns true or false depending on whether it matches or not um, it is a const function because it doesn't change the current object um, yeah, well. and this is of, of course also quite trivial internally to implement as long as we are using our M data because we can just compare the our M data with the other M data and that's already everything that needs to be done. Uh, one interesting thing is that uh, when you create a, an operator uh, for comparison if you want to compare something if it is not equal uh, as far as I remember the compiler is not smart enough to do that so we need to provide also the non-equal operator although as an alternative to, to this, um, you can also just abuse the existing operator, just return, what was it, um, exclamation mark, uh, sorry, um, this one from, so, oops, so we can just negate the, the other comparison operator and I guess we, it should also be just fine enough to say it's not equals asterisk this uh, yeah that should also have the same effect so we can check quickly so we can implement uh, this comparison further down and then check all these three variants how they compare with regard to the amount of operations uh, that are required so let's say mm, if String two is not equals zero. Say, then print. Okay, we don't need this breakpoint. Suck. Uh, so as we already see, we have at least one creation of a temporary object for this thingy, and then we have the call to our operator. So let's go into it. And here the implementation is quite efficient because in principle just equi so this line is equivalent to that line. It will just do the very same thing. It just calls the other operator. So, so here we don't lose anything doing it this way. But of course, if we would um, comment this out and use the upper line, then 
our non equals function would uh, save on one function call. So let's get into it again. Um, so here it, it just has except so um, except this user as debugger calls it only has here a call to our to the operator of the std string and I think I will disable all these uh, debug features to make for a more readable code so general support just my code debugging no optimization is disabled preprocess is disabled code generation um, none. No and linker. Mm, where was it? Uh, incremental. No, okay, this. Kay, now we can uh, again see the same code. Now it will be much clearer. Um, so, okay, we of course have to create the object, so we will not save much. Um, let's step through it quickly. Ah, I stepped into. In into that I didn't want to do that, so let's step over it, click, click. Now we step into, and now we see that the function is quite, quite short indeed. Okay, it needs this as well. Um, so as you see, this uh, can be optimized. We can of course also compare this. Oops. Can to how it looks in our preferred implementation. It will look quite similar, but of course the difference will be m mostly that once we are um, in the... wait a second, so... okay, so if we compare it... Zach. Okay, we see the whole thing. Yeah, so um, it starts out quite similarly, and it has a few more uh, operations, as you see. But all in all, it's not much longer than the uh, most optimized version, where we would just uh, use the call to operator uh, to the operator for the SCD string directly. Um, yeah. So of course, if this would be a uh, so if this would be a release build and optimizations would be enabled, I think uh, it would also here optimize this code away because it is for the most part. So it's there because this is what we are doing. We are here really negate. So we first we do a comparison. So it needs to save this value, and then it needs to negate it. So uh, there might be more efficient ways to do it. But but if it's a, as a, if it is a debug build, it will always generate the code as uh, directly representative of what you wrote as it can without um, trying to to make it more efficient. Um, okay, what else, what other operators could we want to do, uh, to implement? Um, yeah, we could add an operator that would allow us uh, to access individual characters. So, char reference uh, Mm -hmm. That one. Do we want this to be safe? We want this to be safe. No, we don't. We don't care. Um. <laughs> um. So if if you of course implement such an operator, this is a good opportunity to uh, check if you are trying to uh, access a valid address. But here we are not doing it. So what we could uh, do, maybe we should do it, um, is first before we try to access something that might be invalid, have a check. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, size must be so. If size is smaller or equals, oops. Uh, position then position is not longer valid. So positions are only valid from zero to uh, size minus one. Um, and there we would then just w want to throw an exception. Um, which we uh, see how to do for C, but for C++ you can in fact f uh, throw um, any sort of um, object as an exception. So we can for example throw a string. 
Okay, and positive should of course also be a positive number. So if this or pos is below zero, then throw the exception. And th the thing is then, since we are returning a reference, we cannot return a value from here, because we need to return a reference. We could, what we could do is, we could have a static dummy variable, which in those cases we would return, but this, since it's um, returning here uh, as a non-constant character, someone could then change our dummy variable, which we probably would not want. So, that's that. And of course we can implement the same thing as a const function but really we don't really need uh, yeah but we don't need this cast then since uh, the type of C string is a const uh, character anyways okay so let's test this so let's say we have here my string uh, let's go for position 3 uh, or let mm, all this equals this and oops. and then we can use also oops, this to assign something new let's say a yeah why not let's go with an e large e um so if we run this now we can comment this out we don't care for that right now uh, we will see that not only can we get the value out this way, but we can assign the value into our object. So since the square brackets operator returns a reference, we can write on it. So let's run that. Um, yeah, and if we see what it did, it replaced... Okay, so it was the wrong offset. <laughs> of course, I should have used uh, 2, not 3, because it's always 1, 0, but it still worked properly and replaced one letter, in this case the number four, or uh, rather I should say one character since this character is not a letter technically speaking. Uh, also with this const operator in principle we could go uh, with returning an actual value since we do not expect this to be able to change the old value anyways and since it is a machine type so we don't save anything uh, by uh, returning by reference. If of course if we would here return something um, by reference, uh, so return something that is not a machine type, a return by reference would be more efficient because it would avoid unnecessary copy operations. Um, that's said about that. Um, we can also implement the error operator which could allow us to access the uh, data object hidden within our uh, own string. So and this just returns a reference on oops a reference on an M data. Uh, so now we can for example take this thingy and here we can access all the functions which are defined on the standard string. So if we would create an own smart pointer for example this would be the way to go. But let's say um insert uh, at offset 1 let's say uh, we don't care what uh, there should be yeah, this one is good um something I don't know uh, blah the insert operation already takes a string so you don't need to insert characters one by one uh, on the standard uh, template string but you really can uh, insert blah here entire strings. Uh, I think the insert uh, operate uh, function has in fact um, provisions that you can also use it uh, to just insert one character. If you No, it does not. You always need to insert a string. Uh, that would be definitely an optimization if they would provide it, because if you would really need to insert one, st one character, uh, it is kind of wasteful to, to have to create the whole string first. Um, not to see, so it takes element. Yeah, but it's not so bad since it's taking. Uh, it's not so the insert operation. While it would work with um, where is it? S with an with something of type std string. Um, it as far as I have seen does not do that. So it works with this, but it does not cast automatically uh, our string to a full 
I see this string, but it really can just pass the address to where our blast string is in memory. So as you see here, um, we have to well, a call to one operator and then a call to another, but we are not creating like an instance um, of a std string. Uh, this is, as I said, because they have um, two two insert functions: one that takes um, a std string and one that just takes a normal c, c string. So you see here. If they would not have the implementation for C string directly, then it always would be uh, four function calls and instead of two. And of course, uh, further inside some more function calls, because normally, of course, you cannot exp ex expect uh, those uh, objects internally to not uh, have much more complexity. Um, what else could we add? Um, with regard to operators. So what, what you also can do is um, you can add a, an operator that allows you to cast, uh, to do some casting. So, for example, we can make a um, an operator which will cast our string to a integer. But since this is a pretty um, useless operation, we will just abuse it to get the the size. So, if now we write here. Um, int test is equals so now we can assign our my string to an integer and when we do it we will end up in the uh, int operator above so if we go step into it crack crack we end up here and then if we step out of it as we see it uh, okay it's apparently 11 characters long it's plausible it returned the value um, now usually you would of course not not use this method in, in such a scenario uh, because it's kind of it is not the cementing of a string to in any point return its length other than if you query it explicitly with uh, calling the length uh, or the size function on it but if you would implement some other type of object um, where you might want to be able to cast from one object type to another for example you would make an object that can be a floating point number or can be a um, normal uh, integer type uh, you would of course then want to have operators that allow you to cast this type this both types or what you also might implement might where you also might use such a operator would be if you implement a type that can hold I uh, integers of an arbitrary length so let's say 128 bits uh, 256 etc etc um, you might want to implement an operator that would still allow you to cast it at least on a 64 bit integer of course, how then you would handle this scenario if you try to cast something that is bigger um, internally, so that, that the number held internally is bigger than 64 bit, um, that would be up to you. So you would have two strategies: either you just return the lower, lower, the least significant bits, and just don't care for for truncating uh, what what comes at the top, which would be usually the the typical expected behavior with regard to integers. Uh, or you could actually throw an exception saying that um, yeah value overflow um, and that's it so depending on your use case you can be quite quite flexible with your exceptions uh, what else we could do mm. we can implement a more useful, well not useful more common use case that you would do with a string the um, a boolean operator um, open So while uh, casting a string to int is well strange, what you might want to do reasonably is to check if a string is empty, and you might don't want to have to type uh, string dot is empty or something like that. So it actually is quite reasonable to implement a boolean operator, of, of although there are some risks related to it, um, which we'll see in a second. Uh, is empty. Ah, sorry, it, uh, for the normal it's just empty. So in Qt, if you want to check if a string is empty, you write is empty, and if in std it is just called empty, which can be misunderstood to that empty will clear it, but no, if you want to clear it, you have to use the clear function. Uh, so now with this, first of all, uh, let's uh, first of all let's use it properly. So if um, my string, then okay, it's right here. If my string, then something. So it if the string is not empty, it will print, and since we know it's not empty, it will. Um, 
but the danger is we'll see that what's the danger in a second. Wait, did it work? Should have some. No, I didn't. Uh, did I forget the name? Ah, uh, it should not be empty. It should be the negation of that, uh, because if 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 a string is true, so for example, if you write in JavaScript, then you can make a put a string in a if as a directly without any additional checks, and it will evaluate to true if the string has a length uh, non-zero. So now it works, and this behavior you can emulate in C++ by adding such a uh, operator to your string. The problem I think is that now this thing here also works because the, the compiler sees okay we want to cast it to an int <laughs> we don't have an int, ca int uh, cast do we have anything that's compatible with int and unfortunately boolean is compatible with int so uh, if we now enter this line of course it would have both lines enabled then it would work fine because it takes the next best um, casting operator or next best chain of, of casting operators but here as we see it just takes the boolean which kind of is not what we want uh, I think um, there is a way There's there, there is this explicit keyword which should make the compiler not be able yeah and now it's complaining uh, to implicitly call some function so you can use this explicit keyword also with constructor so if you have a constructor that would take let's say a boolean type and you try to construct something from an integer then it would work and it would just take um, your boolean constructor and that might not be what you want so in such scenarios it is advisable uh, to use this explicit keyword also there so here now we are on the safe side and uh, that was it with regard to our string and the operators um, as just to repeat it once more you can define these operators for any operator that exists in C++ so you can have assigning and assign any type to the string so we could for example implement a lot of um, where is it plus yeah here no here actually both of them uh, a lot of plus and plus equals operators like really a lot a lot uh, for integers booleans floating point numbers uh, okay that's all of the typically useful ones but of course if you would have more types that can somehow be represented as string we could implement as many as we want and then be able to concatenate everything to a string um, one thing I said to be careful with is that the compiler in C++ is really um, quite aggressive with regard to automatic casting of types so if you have a type to which you can assign anything it could happen uh, in certain scenarios that uh, the compiler will decide hmm let's just cast it from one nonsense one type to s to this other type and then do some nonsensical cast to another type and then it will be fine um so there there are scenarios where you can um cause problems with implementing too many uh casting operators so therefore it's always good to to s to guard them with such a explicit uh, statement of course the downside is that th here if you do it for the int uh, and then you would have unsigned int or short or, or something that's compatible it would no longer deem it compatible because it would no longer be an explicit um, conversion um, any questions at this point? okay no questions? so everything's clear Just say just say the line number. Don't say first line. Just say la line number number such and such. Yeah. Okay. Um. So this is technically speaking a pointer to an array of characters. So we could have here one more thing. Uh, sorry, um, char num. 
I should call it differently, but it's washed. Um, and this is would be just a single character. So like all the others are just single numbers. It's one integer, it's one float, it's one double, and only this one element will be processed. Um, const is just such that... Uh, so here we have a pointer, therefore for we prefix it with const because we, we don't want to allow the code here to change it, or rather we, do we want to ensure that if we... that we can as, uh, use other const um, type objects here. But this pointer, it will point to a memory region which contains multi multiple characters. So while this is really just one single byte, this thing is the address of a memory range which can have arbitrary many bytes. In fact, it's not really limited. Except, of course, due to physical limitation of how much you can fit in your memory and and stuff like that. Um, and internally printf can handle this standard C string uh, type of string. So internally it will take this address, it will check the character, it will compare is it zero. If it is zero then it will just abort, it's done. If it's not zero it will uh, print this character to the console, advance internally the val a copy of string to the nexus. So actually we could implement this by hand here. So if, if we no don't know what how this works, so this would be well it's just a reference implementation so um, internally it might be slightly different but uh, that's all that is needed for understanding then asterisk put uh, is not zero and put uh, plus plus and since we are lazy we will just print one character at the position of pointer oops and then we of course need to return so this line and this line are functionally equivalent. So just that printf internally has an understanding what a pointer to a C string is and executes it. We could in fact implement su such a thing for integers as well. So we could go here const int nums because there are many and uh, nums oops and of course this would be pro pro D or E doesn't matter, it's the same. Um, let's go with E since we used E before. Um, and in this case it would also terminate as soon as we arrive at a entry in our array which is uh, null. But of course we could define uh, it such that we want minus one to be at our terminating character or uh, some magic number which we pick by random. So. Uh, there, there would be different strategies, but of course, um, you would, you, you need somehow to define where, where it terminates. So you cannot uh, pass an array uh, in C and know where, where it ends, except through knowing, um, marking it somehow in the data that you are passing within it, because it's just a memory address. It does not have the quality of knowing uh, how long it would be. Um, so we can uh, uh, now test this. So if so, let's create an array. Uh, int um, nums is equals one 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 two 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 three 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 and null. And if you forget the null, then it will crash or do random things. Um, so now we can also uh, add nums to this. And what we also could do here maybe. Um, we will improve it, well improve it, change the, the way, so b before it was really behaving like the shift operator that we have in uh, in the standard template library, but now what I'm doing is I'm adding a, a white space at the end, so for example QT's QDebug does this also uh, yeah, why not uh, and it makes, at least for us, the, the whole thing more readable, because now we will see uh, all the places where, where the things were concatenated. Ah, I already had wait spaces here, well, pushed together. So you see now, um, for test, it really uh, ex executed this loop multiple times, and first it wrote T, then E, S, then again T, then the white space, then the additional white space. In the same way it behaves here, if you have an array, it will execute it until the abort condition and we can of course try to provoke an error 
Uh, but I guess there will be another somewhere close by, so it probably will not be very uh, inter interesting. Well, it was not that bad, so it printed free and then it started printing random garbage until it finds something that was zero and stopped. <laughs> and of course, if you would have a C string uh, without the terminating null, uh, then um, we would run exactly the same sort of problem. But of course, if you write a string, um, C, plus uh, C and C++ plus plus internally always append the backslash zero. You don't you don't need to do it by hand. Um, but of course, if you really want to, uh, just um, blah. Uh, uh, ah. Of course, if you really want to, you can, can on purpose forget to add the terminating null character, and that will also end up in some garbage on the output. Um, yeah, so blah, then it printed some more garbage, and then it found a zero somewhere and aborted. So, obviously, we would need to add backslash zero, although though we can also just type zero that this is equivalent. Um, it's really a matter of personal preference whether you would write it as an escaped zero or not. But now it works uh, fine again, um, since now the string is proper again. Uh, any more questions? Um, well, yes and no. You could use plus, you could use equals, you could use equals, equals, uh, but you cannot use a combination of characters which does not exist in the C standard. So, uh, to maybe bring a good... Yes. Yes, but you could not define plus minus or plus and then divide or anything that as such is not a valid known operator. Okay, any more questions? Yeah. So, um, what we want here is to return a reference on the object in within which we are right now. But the definition of this is that it behaves like a pointer. So you cannot return this because then you would be returning a pointer and not a reference. If you write, however, asterisk this, then this whole thing is treated like a um, li like an object uh, and not a pointer to that object. And that and that you can return as a reference. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Um, if there is nothing else, then um, I'd say we can take a look on to maybe improving our string class uh, to become a real a real string class, so something that does not use a uh, m data thingy, but something that really is a string. So let's, um, however, for that uh, create a new project. Uh, um, let's call it my string. Okay, so we don't. Now, of course, it is just mindly pedagogically, pedagogically proper to put everything in the C file, <laughs> but uh, for reasons of speed, let's just uh, stick with it. Um, I can later split it up into uh, proper individual files, um, and as the as a result, we want to print out. And what do we have? Get C string. Yeah, well. Um, 
and what we will also do here in order to make those things more efficient uh, we don't care for this, we can keep that we don't have this anymore because we don't have a string internally um, that is fine, that is fine uh, we can be here also a bit uh, lazy, let's say temp is equals see, oops this and temp and return temp plus other so um, we can trade in some performance for uh, for convenience um, that is maybe not the most elegant thing I mean the plus operator we can always go with asterisk this is equals as well as this plus other um, so where do we actually need to change things Everything here and there and comparison we have this we have already improved and these two are fine I mean as it stands in principle we could uh, um, something less elegant um return asterisk uh, so this in a function that is marked with this const keyword is a const this basically but you can cast from a const thing to a non const thing again and then use it so then we go with operator this one on pause um <laughs> that is of course a bit hacky but it works fine if you want to really be sure we can change this operator to really return the value by value not by refer why is it complaining um ah crutch uh yeah that helps with that that helps with that um yeah well, so we have first of all we have reduced the amount of code that we need to write uh, although we could make it m even more elegant we can but we don't have to um so what needs change okay, a few of them so what we will now do is we'll create an object which will hold um a string so it will be a, a internal object which is not which will not be used um externally um, the idea behind this is that uh, we will through it implement this copy on write semantic so the object will have a, a value that um, is a counter which um, counts how many actual objects are referring to it and the idea is that when you make an access oh actually this will this will not be helpful um, uh, that, will, that will kind of run against what we will be doing I will just undo that quickly. Uh, the th uh, what were wha uh, well, yeah. Um, so it will c with it counts the, the this references and as soon as we we do some operation that would change the string, it instead of doing this operation, it will first check is the reference greater one. If it is not, then great. Then we can do the operation on the string we hold, on the object we hold. If the operation, if however the count is greater one, then we will make a copy for our own, decrement the counter in the original object by one. And then we have a copy which is which has a counter set to one, and then we can do the operation on it. So, for example, when we have a lot of assignment operates, or we're returning something from a function, or passing something as an argument to a function, we can avoid copying the internally held hold held hold washed data. Um, but instead, we are just uh, copying a, a reference and in and are incrementing a counter, which is um, quite efficient in comparison. Um, and there are a few uh, strategies how you can uh, create such a uh, sort of uh, copy and write object but uh, for example what is advisable is to implement it such that if you in future will have multiple threads potentially operating with these objects to ensure that them that they to ensure that they are 
also already uh, multi threaded su such that the implementation of your copy and write mechanics is done in a way that if you have two threads parallel in parallel trying to access the same object it will internally be able to resolve that conflict uh, without creating any errors and of course it is advisable to do it in a way that is as efficient with regard to uh, computation computational complexity as possible so you would not want to use some operating system provided facility like a mutex which um, is uh, quite slow but you would want to use something that the CPU architecture allows you, uh, provides you as a functionality and uh, here what you would do are what you would use are so-called atomic instructions uh, the idea behind those is that they are usually uh, semantically made up of more than one operation which they perform but they guarantee that the two operations will be perf performed in the CPU as one it is not possible that if you try to do the two operation sequences in parallel in two different threads then that they will somehow access the memory in between and then one of them will end up in an inconsistent state but you have the guarantee um, that first the one will be done and the other one will be just on a hardware level blocked until the first one is, is done executing on this particular memory address and since of course uh, hardware specific instructions sound like it's not very portable uh, there are some um, facilities provided by the standard template li uh, library like the atomic uh, headers which will implement for you the most typical operations that you might want to do on uh, an arbitrary memory address and then you just can use this template uh, provided by, by this um, library instead of having to find out which ex explicit instruction you need to use in your own code. So let's uh, start with that. So I said we create a structure. Uh, let's call it uh, as data. Oops. And then the first thing as we said it will hold a pointer to our uh, string, so charge then uh, pointer, then we need a size so let's say size t, uh, small t, uh, size, or let's call it count uh, generally semantically the difference between size and count is that size usually really refers uh, to the size in bytes while count refers to the amount of elements and if the elements are bigger than one byte, then uh, the, ca the count is accordingly a, frac uh, a fraction of size. But not every li uh, library and every framework hold to this notation, so you can often also find size just to r refer to the to the count of elements inside. So here you really have to check with the documentation uh, what it means. But anyhow, let's now add our counter. Uh, we want this counter to be changeable even on constant uh, objects, so we c define this mm, property of our o structure explicitly as mutab mutable. Then we uh, std std atomic, and we just want an integer, and we call it um, ref ref count. Okay. If we want to save on programming lines, we can uh, create the, the pointer here directly. And um, now, what we will want to do is a couple of uh, helper functions. So first of all, we will need um, something that creates such a object. So let's call it uh, um, mk make data. Um, it just takes a count of the elements so that we know how many we create um, mm, oops. and we need to assign all the relevant values so you count is count um reference uh now we need to as assign it a value so store uh zero 
because we don't have a value in yet. And of course our data. Okay, maybe I should call this p. Let's call it p data. This is more in line with the rest of our semantics. Um, new uh, character of count of count. We could use malloc here, but why? Why mix things? We can just stick to one of them. Then we will need a function that will attach such an object to our current instance. So let's call it attach. It just takes. Uh, and then we will need also a detach function which detaches a object from the current object. So the M pointer. That's why why it doesn't have a anything internally, so we will uh, first, before we attach something, we have to detach whatever might have been attached already and now we will do the attaching, which is quite trivial, we just take our pointer here uh, we go to our uh, ref count and we make uh, fetch and add uh, one so incre incrementing is always easy Decrementing uh, not so much, um, and then we just assign our so then the pointer to our end pointer. The detaching asset is uh, more uh, convoluted. First of all, we need to check if there was something attached. So if this is not null, because it, it might have been null, um, then uh, we could have something that checks whether the reference count is actually larger zero but um, we assume it is, it has to be. Now we will be using one of the properties of the of this atomic one of these atomic properties of this atomic instruction um, namely uh, the oops, fetch and subtract and the idea how this works is it um, makes a copy of the value then decrements the value by one and then it returns whatever value, whatever copy of a value it did before. So this way, you can uh, be and since this is locked, you can be sure that between these operations, no other operation can get and change your value. So what you do now is you check whether the value was one when you did the decrementation, and if it was one, it means now it's zero, and if it's zero, then it means that we can uh, deallocate this memory. So first of all, we need to free this. Um, delete this, then we need to delete that oops if we get the order wrong that will be very bad <laughs> and um, is that complaining? alright, oh we don't, we the M is missing um, and as a last step here we, we, we mark this as null so we always set this to zero uh, to null uh, because if we decremented the counter then of course we are no longer allowed to hold the reference to it. So this is the copy on write, uh, a very simple template for how you can implement your own copy on write uh, mechanics. Um, as said here you could have just used an integer and then just plus plus minus minus and check whether it's zero but f in a multi-threaded scenario that would uh, fail so here we went with implementing it the right way, right way uh, from the get-go and now let's use it. So here, uh, first of all, of course, we need to initialize um, this with null. Then in this constructor, uh, this it in principle is just an assignment operation. We can ensure we have called the parent, co the, uh, the other constructor, and here internally. So normally constructors will not call like the the one without parameters at all but we can use the initialization list to call it and this makes for more readable code in my opinion and then now we can use um, asterisk this is equals other so here we also save on explicitly implementing the particular logic which we require here we will need to do something although we could be also very cheap um, we could uh, also here call the parent constructor and then make just this this equals uh, is plus equals string 
Mm, can we? No, we don't have a plus equals for string. Okay, we cannot. This one we will need to do uh, properly. Operation assignment we will need to do properly as well. This one is cheap, this one is cheap, this one, this one, okay. So there is not too much work, but this one needs to be done properly. So um, what we do is we still call this to have the pointer cleared. Then we make a new element by calling make data. Uh, we are missing one include. Uh, so st uh, so it's to learn. Oops, it's to learn from string and put it in. So this has generated for us already enough room um, in this thingy and it has set the size as well. So we only need to copy to our pet data the original string. And we can use mem copy instead of string copy. Um, since we already know the length that could be should be maybe marginally more efficient. And now as a last step we need to attach uh, the newly created internal object to our uh, current object and of course in the destructor we need to detach whatever might or might not have been attached already. Okie dokie. So now the assignment operator um, here mm, I'm thinking whether we can somehow cheaper do it but not really mm, well no actually it's not that's that is cheap enough because it already takes a type other so this can be done very efficiently. Uh, uh yeah here M -M no, sorry attach just attach um the other ones are M pointer and voila. This is all. The log the rest of the logic of the program takes care of us. This one is already done. If you would want to have an explicit uh, assignment operator that takes the character, we could then just uh, exploit the the constructor here. So let's maybe quickly implement it as a demo. Ch um, Constructor star. Uh, that of course would not be. And it's very inefficient. We should not do that. But in in principle, you could go with some with something like that. Um, and it would not be that bad because basically we just then increment decrement and uh, create an object on the stack, not on the heap. So this is acceptable performance-wise. But of course. Um, that's actually pretty comparable with what happens here if we would go with, with a C string as an argument. Just with the difference that the whole file, uh, the whole program would be bigger. Because here, each time we make a line where we assign a, a C string to the thing, the compiler will really just pretty much create for us a object before and then destroy it on the on the stack. So that also would be fa uh, fast enough uh, thanks to our copy and write uh, mechanism. But um, since this would then be happening for pretty much every line where we use C-string, then the whole program will get bigger. So, so this would be uh, an optimization, which, depending on the extent of the size of your program, might be worthwhile. But the general rule is when you're starting developing a program, um, design it with performance in mind, but start optimizing only once the program is really uh, up and running, because otherwise you might start optimizing things which will only be used very rarely and that's, this is just a waste of time. Uh, what you, as said, need to do is to, to think about what optimizations are possible in the future and uh, ensure that you will use the right container types to, ge to get good performance uh, from the get-go because changing that later is again a waste of work. So we had this, we had that. Uh, what else do we need? Um, the compiler is somehow not showing all the errors. There should be quite a few. Ah, okay, now we're showing it again. So here, um, our operation operator that this operator here will be. Um, let's start with 
with, with this one because this is the cons one. So this one is the cheap one which doesn't cost as much uh, to do because it doesn't change. So this one guarantees that the value will not change. So we can just use our pointer, check uh, the size. First we need to check whether the pointer is not null. So if this is null, then uh, we cannot do it. Um, oh, that's a good point that we have with our uh, attach. Yes, okay, so we should always check if this is not null. Because it might be, and then it would be a problem. And detach already leaves it always set to null, so this is fine. Okay, so uh, yeah, we check if this is not null. We comp we check the offset. We throw an error if we should throw an error. And here we just can go with data from post because we are now safe that it is fine. And here for this operator, there are two things to check. First of all, if it is not null, and then so uh, it is not null and count is e is larger zero. So this will be this operator, and now this one. This is l so to say. Uh, wait, did I forget something? Yeah, this is pretty inefficient. We we might do some more optimizations later on, but this thing uh, is what most well demonstrates how this copy and write works as soon as we implement it. Because uh, the first thing we should do here is first we check if um, well first of all we we can do this check first, so we can leave that in. But then we need to check if this thing um, has a count. If this is larger one, because if it is larger one, then everything gets complicated. If it is not larger one, we are on the safe side, just returning uh, the data as we did in the const case. But if it is not larger, uh, but if it is a uh, larger one, then we need to make a copy. So. Um, we can copy the copy from our copy constructor. Uh, zack. Do we need um yeah, p data? This we already have. You count and here you count and here data, and then we just need to do attach. Yeah, and the attach internally does detach for us already, so we have we are set with only this much code. So now each time we would want to alter the string, um, we would make a copy of it instead of uh, altering. So well, it when there are more than one instance. So when we pass the string from one function to another, we we do it efficiently, and as soon as we try to change it and we see that it was shared, then we make a copy which is then the expensive part of copying and um, working with strings and then later this one value can be changed safely. Um, okay and here for our C string so we need a few more things so first of all we can check if this is not null then we return uh, data else return null and here for the comparison we need also to implement this correctly so um, if um, well um, m is equals null so if this is null is not at uh, punct m point uh, equals null so if both are null it's fine and if both are not null it's also fine, but if one is done and the other is not, it's not fine. Uh, although that makes a complication for later. Um, yeah, well, yeah. Um, we need one more check. If if one of them is null, then just return true because we already know if one is null, then the other is also null. This means they are same. We don't need to check the other one. Um, and last but not least, here we should check now the lengths because if the lengths are not the same, if count is not like count from the other one, then the strings cannot be the same by definition. So if this is then return 
false and finally we can return um, compare the strings uh, we could have of course used here uh, the string compare function and and skip this but this way it's more efficient data comma um, data comma count the counts are the same so it no, doesn't matter which one we take and this must be equals equals so the compare function returns zero if they are the same and plus or minus one if one of the strings is bigger than the other but here we just care for it, it being the same so we check for this being null okie dokie um jawohl jawohl um yeah this is somewhat not very performant um should we improve that mm -hmm. I mean we could improve that we have the press operators mm. oh this is not a good optimization that should not work um That is very bad uh, because we are making using again the plus operator that will never work. We can use the optimization here, uh, but we can not use this trick here. That is, that is an oversight. That is not good. Um, we can of course. How do we do that the most elegant way? Um, yeah. So what? is probably the most elegant way is to make this plus equals other and then return other yeah, so return temp and then implement this entirely because now again the one is referring to the other one which uh, again does not make sense uh, because we will just end up in a deadlock so since the plus and equals operator is changing whatever we have here internally we will um, copy this part here uh, so that um, we know that once we arrive here we have an array uh, well a data object just for us and us alone uh, and we will do another optimization we will here not use new but use malloc we just need to cast that to charge term and here we need to change this to f oops it was wrong to free we should not have had the square brackets here that was a again a copy paste bug um, and the advantage of using malloc is that we can in fact now use realloc to make ours, our data array bigger so we can have pointer uh, well first we need a new size so size underscore t although actually we can reuse it so first of all we can uh, now we, we need a copy we cannot make it without a copy um, uh, or you count as a matter um, is equals uh, pointer um, sorry first m pointer you count plus other punct counter so we have the new size um, now we can say a uh, Data is equals yeah. we are log data new size. So now we have enough data for the additional part of the string and now we can use mem okay we need to cast first. Now we can use the mem copy function to append the string. So mem copy this plus um, the old size because it needs to be an uh, uh, addition. Yeah, well, here we copy other punct data and we copy the amount of characters that are in there and last thing we need to update our local count with the new count I mean we... Uh, what is it complaining about? Um, and we could have made without the. Uh, we could, in principle, use um, 
actually why not let's make it as short as possible without extra values um, and this just plus equals yeah um, it's not the most computationally effective way but it is more elegant this way okay so this works ah, yeah, and we need to return um, a copy on the this object that should be working fine yeah well I don't think we forgot anything at this point uh, should be working let's try it and if it crashes we will notice um oh <laughs> We forgot one thing. Uh, so you see it somehow worked but then at some point here it didn't and the problem is that it's n not null terminated. So uh, we just put the, the raw data in. We did not think about making room for the for the null terminating character. So here um, we need to do two things. String len plus one. Mem copy plus one. Um, but that will also not be what uh, that would work, but this is not really elegant enough. So we do here plus one, and internally in this function we make also here plus one, but we want to keep count uh, to be just um, the amount of elements, not counting the last null. So this needed to be changed here. Um, now realloc also needs a plus one. And our mem copy here needs also a plus one. Okay, okay, now it should be fine. Yep, perfect, it's working. Any questions at that point? No questions, okay. So um, let's demonstrate the how this works. So for example here if we go if we see so first of all of course we have uh, the constructor for our for this thing then we enter into here then we check and we see that there that it's fine and then the important thing is that we could have so here other is also passed by reference so it does not make a difference uh -huh. um we should make somewhere an in a bad performing function that we can use as the demonstration for the advantages of co of copy on write uh so let's go back to here let's make here a function uh right uh, um Oops. Um, that was this is the string. Um, get str. And this gets a instance of C my string. Um, and th it does not uh, either by reference or pointer. We really just put the whole thing through it. So. And to return it, we just want std. Um, we can just do this so that we have something uh, that makes sense. And then let's, let's call the function. Oops. So um, we start, and then we enter here directly our constructor. And then if we continue, then we enter the constructor of, of the uh, C string that we had, then we go out, then we... So the, the thing we were in before that looked so with so much code was just the constructor of the mData. And now we enter mData, so again we end up in the implementation. By the way, it's 5,000 lines of code for, the, for this implementation at least. So then we are done. Uh, we need to get out of that. We are done with this. Then and now we can enter our function. So at this point we have um, already performed a few oper operations and the 
a const uh, assignment operator for the standard string made a full deep copy of the string that we passed to it so this is not very efficient and then of course we can here do our function we can get out of our function and then we make a uh, and then we intrinsically call the destructor for the fu for the internal function which w once if we want to step through it has a lot of operations before it will return so it will w it will be much much more stuff here before we are done uh, but if we now add the same function here and use our copy and write string to do the same thing you will see that it will do much less operations uh, because of this copy and write semantics so we get into this we obviously have to end up in the constructor or in, in the copy constructor in this case um, we make our assignment and in our assignment we really just um, make the attach which means effectively uh, just this one call is somewhat uh, outside of our own code and this is implemented quite quickly so if you if we g look if we try to look into it maybe I can show you the internal implementation so of course using um, native instructions would be faster but uh, here it will not be that much internal in the whole code uh, call stack, suck. Um, yeah, so atomic intrinsic check memory order, that, that's just some debug stuff and it's done so uh, there is some code in it but it's not super much and of course if that would be a release build it would be even less than that but anyhow so we do our attach um, where did we end up here uh, why did something wrong with the debug I should not have brought us to the line we are down there it's not optimized strange let's try again so step in step 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 we detach we attach okay now it's working fine um, then we return from our assignment operator and then we can go into our function do something um, exit from it and then in the detach function again we just um, here decremented by one but we don't need to delete or free memory and these are the expensive operations so the whole um, passing of the object even though it was done by value um, ended up to be quite efficient uh, because we did not need to do much except um, a, a change a few point uh, well one pointer and uh, one counter and this is uh, the main advantage. Of course, if we would, okay. Now let's let's take a look into this function. But now we only have one reference. So let's make a copy. One is equal to this. So we are assigning. So f first we will step through this, and then we will step through changing one uh, character in here. Although we actually would see it here as well as a demo. But anyhow. So again, we call the constructor. We initialize it. We use our copy con uh, our assignment operator because we are lazy. I mean, effectively, this is just a one-liner. Mm, we should not be lazy. In this case, we really should just put this here because, I mean, it's n not really much difference. But given that it's just a one-liner, we could go for the more efficient version of it anyways mm, so again suck, we get in we do our attach and we, we can step over the attach we don't need to see into it um, and then here now when we will try um, to do something first of all we check that the whether the index is fine and now we see uh, that it actually is 2 so internally here 
we have to make the copy uh, we don't care for the details of making the copy, we copy the data um, then we attach the new thing and then we can return a reference so now as you can see here internally um, our data changed to E while the data in the other one uh, stayed where is it? here stayed unchanged um, now there are of course some downsides so for example if here we would uh, not want to change it but just to get uh, yeah, if we would want to just get the old value um, depending on what your compiler does that might trigger a copy operation as well um, let's see how smart the, the compiler was here uh, if it was smart enough, but no it was not so the problem is that uh, if this object here is not const uh, then the compiler will always opt for using uh, the other the non-const version of the operator so if we would um, cast it to to const oops. Uh, then it will would end up in the function which really saves us a lot of operations and uh, wait, what? oh we decided to make a full copy on the cast that is not cool uh, so what so the thing we just here wanted to cast the whole thing um, and then make let's make another demo mm -hmm. um, const reference oh I think I know I I think I should have added reference here then it will be cast without making a copy then we don't need the other test case uh, should be fine now ok let's see yep and now we are ending up in the const case so uh, of course the usefulness of this uh, always non-copying code path is limited by the fact that um, the compiler is not smart enough to figure out that an operation uh, oops, like this is, is read only so one could expect that the thing should here see okay I'm just taking a value and copying it into a register I do not need to return it um, by reference so I can use the const version but it does not do that what we can of course test is what it would do if we compile this as a release build with enabled optimization although then of course the debugging might not be very helpful because the release builds are uh, generally not as user friendly ok the thing needs to load a few symbols since for the uh, release build it uses different libraries let's see where we end up now it's also not smart enough in the release build to do that uh, but where it uh, this really helps is if as I started with the other example here if you have functions to which you pass something um, and then you think about uh, remem remember to pass it by const then inside your function um, it will in fact um, use the more efficient let's just index and uh, code path um, also an important thing to say here is that this copy on write mechanics is not necessarily intended um, to always avoid um, co copying if you are reading but it's mostly intended to avoid uh, copying and copying and copying again before you do something with a function because often you might have a scenario where you get a variable in and then you pass the variable to another function and then to another function and then some function will then do something with that variable and if we would not have a copy on write semantics then each time we are passing this variable by value it would do a full copy uh, and waste a lot of CPU cycles um, implementing this copy on write semantics assures us that at least in these scenarios we know that we will be efficient and um, normally we would also of course expect the, the different well the different operations that we can do 
on this uh, on this object to be more specific than just this square bracket operator. This, are, this is a let's say a negative example in a way because you use the same one for reading and writing but what you for example could do is you could have um, explicit functions uh, so let's say char get at um, which then takes int pos and then you could have a set at void of course and that is const and this is not const and then we need a value uh, char val and now um, it is using them is really uh, explicit what what you want and what you expect. So we can again um, here with the get at just use the quick code path um, and with the set at well actually with the well first of all we can of course just copy it it's trivial uh, but we can also um, use this. Zack, zack, um, right, it's operator zack, um, pause is equals. But so if we want to keep the operators, we can, uh, why is it complaining? Expected an operator, and it is an operator. Um, oh, I think I know what, it wants it in this semant in this notation is not very pretty and one more thing we can do since the upper thing here is marked as const then this is internally already const so actually we can use the same operator in these two functions and here if we use it we will automatically because this is const end up in the optimized code path and of course then if you add functions like um, that should be const like, uh, for example, the boolean operator or a um, um, t, uh, get count. Oops. Uh, then, then we, wherever we can, we think about making them const. Although, of course, as said internally, um, well it can be even better. Uh, internally. If we know that this is a const function, so so even if we don't mark it as const, we could still. Um, why is it complaining? This thing needs to be count. Uh, we can still, of course, use use it um, directly, but it's more elegant, of course, to use const. And if we know that it doesn't change, we don't need to check um, check anything except the uh, bounds in this case. Um, so so this. This checks really are only necessary if we expect that something might change. And there's one optimization since we have this code in two places here and there. We could actually move it um, to a helper function. That way I guess we should do it. Let's call it um, void prepare write or prepare for write, however you prefer and then instead of having the code in two places we can just call our prepare for write function whenever we expect that we will uh, start changing uh, our um, internal data object yes that is elegant enough yeah so any questions okay well Apparently there are no no more questions, no questions at all. Well, it was just optimization, so I guess it's fine. Um, yeah. So now, since already it's five o'clock, um, I think we should first take a look on to what will be the the large project assignment for the final project, and if we have time left, I will go through um, some solutions for the homework that has already been assigned since some of you requested uh, the a reference solution to be presented we will do it now so uh, homework that will be turned in after that uh, can not longer be 
evaluated since the solution was already present, obviously. But um, let's go with the uh, with taking a look on the final assignment. So this is it. So it is made up of three parts. As I said, I have already uploaded it to Moodle, uh, not as Word file, just as text. So the formatting is slightly off, but I guess that should not be a problem. And the idea is to implement a object uh, not of type string and also not of type of actually anything but uh, of a type called variant or rather a well, variant describes basically an object that can be any type or at least it can be a collection of types so realistically of course you will not be able to cast anything to anything to anything um, but you can make something that will allow you to cast many things uh, to one given type and then cast from this type back. So the the variant object should be able to handle integers of the four lengths that we have available in our compiler. Um, so 8-bit, eight, 16-bit, eight 32-bit bit and 64-bit in both signed and unsigned versions. So just to have an idea of how that would look, so basically like with our string class in the unoptimized string class we had um, here two different constructors for example so one that takes an object of type string so with the variant we would of course expect here to be able to assign another variant to it but then we would also have constructors that takes a string then the eight different integers and then the other things that I will mention later um, and then of course we need uh, at least assignment operator so as written in the task so let's let's first look through the file and then we will look further. So as I said, we need the uh, integers in both signed and unsigned versions, so in total it means it's um, 8 integers. We also want to be able to assign a, a boolean value to it, um, so ensure that there will be a cast operator available uh, f for and to from and to boolean. Well, f from boolean we don't need because the compiler will automatically cast it to I think you in date or maybe to in 32 depending on the compiler preset but we will want to have an operator that gives that uh, returns a, a boolean which just is used to check whether it's zero or not then we want to be able to handle a uh, floating so well float 64 is basically a double um, and the normal float uh, but since the compiler offers us uh, the ability to uh, cast from normal float to double uh, with just a small warning about potential data loss. Actually, only if you cast the other way around, you have a warning. If you cast from flow to double, there is none. Um, so it's optional. If you want, you can implement uh, everything for both, for double and for float. Uh, but it is enough if you just do it for double, since the compiler will uh, do the float part. Of course, the downside then is that the variant will uh, internally waste memory. So the way uh, it works, like with string it's obvious the string has a var variable length so you have here a data field where you can assign any anything to it um, and with an 8-bit integer you would just al allocate one byte and then assign it with, with a uh, w would assign 8 bytes uh, and allocate 8 bytes and assign them and uh, if you have a mechanics where you always cast um, normal floats to doubles then uh, you would just waste um, some bytes but this is fine that is acceptable you can uh, of course if you want to improve it you can improve it uh, as mentioned um, there is another strategy that you can employ to improve uh, the performance of your uh, variant even more um, since you know that uh, the data that the pointer here has a specific size and optimization you can do but it, uh, that's up to you so you don't need to uh, use all the optimization but of course the, the more you figure out ways to make your implementation uh, efficient the better for the score so uh, just to say one of the options is that you just can just reuse this pointer to store values uh, up to 32 bits inside it directly uh, one thing that you will definitely need is of course information which type it is so in addition to some size column or size parameter you definitely also need some let's say int type um, or you actually could go with an enum so for example you, you could go with enum a type 
enums I showed you a long time ago. We never use them, but they are in principle it's like an integer that's the, just that instead of a number it has a name. So uh, undefined is zero. Although you probably will not have undefined. Um, int acht can be one. Uh, although you don't even need to count them through since it automatically increments for you and and so on and so on and so on and so on and at some point you have the string then you have the string etc etc um, so this is something that you um, should do I mean you, you have to have a type you can of course just use n numerical values and then just remember what which one means but I would suggest using um, an enum for that it makes for a more readable code um, so then we want of course our variant to be able to handle strings or byte arrays in general, so the implementation uh, for how a string is held should pretty much be mostly based on this implementation which I will upload, uh, meaning that we want to have a counter and since it's a variant type we will need a counter anyways. Um, although what we of course could have done if we, if we know the types and only have null, null terminated strings, um, we could have done that like you have you always check the type and from the type you know the length but the way for example you can do it is that you have only type uh, undefined, type integer, type float, type uh, string and type face string and then you check your your count field or your size field in this case so if you know okay I, I have an integer what's how many bytes do I have actually of data okay I have four bytes and it's a 32-bit one uh, and the same with floats and doubles. If it's 64 bit, then it's a double. If it's a, it, if it's 32, then it's a um, normal float. So there, there are ways how things can be uh, optimized um, one way or the other. Meaning that you can either optimize for more readable code, more optimize for more elegant uh, code. You can optimize for maximal saving of memory. Uh, what you optimize for is up to you and the basic requirement is just it has to work. Um, making it optimized, uh, making it pretty gives bonus points which help to offset uh, well mistakes and bugs that would um, be normally uh, mean a, lo a loss of points. So it's always good to try to, to do the work as good and as elegant as possible or at least as let's say as sophisticated as possible, I, whether you optimize them for elegance or for performance uh, if you make a completely unreadable code and very unelegant but super well performing that's also good uh, just as long as it's in one of the pot potential potential types of measure measurement sophisticated enough um, okay so we have uh, un think then we want to ha hold white strings so as I showed uh, with in the lecture about strings um, we can use the this Unicode strings where a character is two byte long um, so we want to have a compatibility with that uh, the variant must have a, a constructor for every type they support although you can get by uh, like not making one constructor for every integer you just make a constructor for int and for int 64 and like for a short and char will ju just be covered by the int constructor you could of course go with just having the in the in 64 constructor but that would not be the best since on a 32-bit platform you do not have a 64-bit native type which would make this always inefficient so I would suggest to to do it this way and uh, as said for floats you don't need to support both uh, size of floats um, and of course we need an assignment operator um, in principle as you have seen in the string example if we have an assignment operator for variant then it's already enough because the compiler will do the casting so I would say that is already good enough of course if you want optimization then you can uh, go with making assignment operators for the individual types uh, individually um, and as a bonus task so uh, one that just gives bonus points and no, no no negative points is you can also implement additional operators to do mathematical operations so if you we would have for example two um, variants which internally hold an integer we would want to be able to make one the one plus the other and then get a new variant as a result um, or, ma or multiplication so you know if, if you start doing it you need to to, to add all the operators also the logical ones um, what happens if you try to add a number to a string 
Well, if you try to add a number to a string, then it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. You can concatenate them, uh, and that is valid. Although this is dangerous because it, mm, how to say it, it sabotages type checking in a way. So ideally, the expected behavior if you are trying to do any mathematical operation on non-compatible types. Uh, so assignment should be always fine, but other other than assignment, um, you sh if the types are not compatible, you should throw an error. So, if you try to do any mathematical operation w between a string and a, and one of the n numerical types, you should just throw an exception. Um, if you try to make an operation between a uh, integer and a float, it should be mm, fine. Um, although, if that is too much work. Um, I guess we don't need those. I mean, in principle, here again, the automatic casting of the compiler will do it for you. So if you, um, no, will it? No, it will not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's up to you how you handle adding uh, integers to floating point numbers. If you want to uh, to throw an exception still, or if you want to allow it, it's it's up to you. Um, I don't care. <laughs> um, and last but not least, uh, the variant should also be able to hold um, a more complex object. So an object which uh, should be derived. Um, so we ha you have here the prototype, as you see, of the of the of the class. So C variant object, and you should be able to assign a an object of this type um, to your variant, and the variant then should uh, be able to internally so to make a copy of this thing and internally store it and of course uh, very important to call the destructor once this is uh, once the object is not longer needed so with regard to our example here um, you can of course reuse the data uh, variable so I guess you would have void data because you c it can be anything it would no longer be char data it would just be void data um, but you would need to remember to to call the destructor on that thing instead of uh, trying to use f a malloc or free. So if you free uh, something that has a destructor, this destructor is not invoked, so this would not be good. Um, jawohl. What else is important? So this will would be part one, and part two will be to use uh, this object to implement additional functionality. So what is nice with regard to variants is that um, if they can hold a complex object, this complex object can be, uh, for example, a list or a map. So uh, during the probably next lecture, because today I guess we will not have enough time, I will uh, show you uh, some of the containers that are available in the standard template library. I think I showed some of them to you very briefly in the past already, but here we will take a more detailed look. And um, the idea is to to make th this part two, um, so we have two s special types: a variant array and a variant map. So the array is like a, a, a an array um, where you can just have access elements by index, and you need to resize it if you want to add more elements. And um, so, like in a way, like our simple list. Uh, but don't worry, you don't need to implement a a complex container type internally, as as it said in the implementation notes for part two, you can just make uh, your implementation like I did it here with the string so that I in internally it just... why did I do that? Ah, here. So that internally it, it just maps on no, in this case not string but std the vector or std map um, and you don't need to like reuse the hash table code or the uh, simple list code or anything you just use um, an existing container type you just need to ex expose it its relevant interface uh, on your derived object, uh, on the object that you derive from our reference object. Um, so this is this 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 might 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 sound more complicated than it is. Uh, you have seen seen me doing pretty much this for strings uh, already. Um, so yeah, that should work fine enough. And what do we want? So. Um, it should of course throw an exception on the out of bounds uh, access. It should have a function to query its size and a function to resize it. So at least for the array, um, and the ability to to grow the array on 
and op optionally you can add the ability to grow the array on the fly so you can implement it such that if you try to assign a value to an index which is not valid instead of throwing an exception you would then just grow the array to be large enough to contain this 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 element and fill just the gap with empty elements that is also fine and for the map um so uh, as said i will show i will, I will show i will show you the right um container types to you to be used during the next lecture i think you will be busy with part one anyways <laughs> until then um and for the map we want a size function so again it's it's super trivial because the std map already has a size function you just you just expose it to the outside world and a coin contain slash exist function would be also good so whether you, you can check whether a given key in the map already exists um i actually don't think std has a function as as such but it has a find function which gives you an iterator um to the object if it found one or an iterator on the end if it didn't so it's it's a one liner to to just repurpose this find function with the right uh, in the right way to make it into an explicit ex uh, contains slash exists function um and as last part well last mandatory part of part two of the assignment uh, you should add the square brackets operator to your um to to the to the uh, variant so uh, well, add or extend. So if, if your variant, of course, has contains a string, then you can also use the square bracket operator to access individual uh, characters in the string. But you should also extend it um, by a square bracket operator, which will return you an object of type variant, which will you will then be able to use to access uh, by index or by value uh, or by key, I mean, um, from the parent variant. So that you don't need like to take the variant and then always um cast it first on a c variant array or c variant map but such that if you have a variant then you can directly on this variant if it if it contains internally a array or map uh, use the square bracket operators to access its uh, child elements and as a bonus uh assignment for this uh, pr uh, part two you can implement a function well two functions one for getting and one for setting variants that would operate with full paths so the idea is that you have an object and assuming, of course, that it is not a, a trivial uh, type, so so these ones are trivial types, and this is a well complex type, and this also is a complex type. Hence, so assuming you have, let's say, a map. So, for example, in the map, you have an entry called key one. Then you add, you pass this whole string, and th the thing checks. Okay, first of all, am I a map? Am I a map? Yes. Then do I have a entry at key one? Yes. Okay. Then first first pa task is done. Then let's take the entry at key one and then check okay th that's a numeric so is it a array yes it is okay then do we have an entry at zero yes we have so let's take the entry and so on and so on and so on and at some point uh we arrive at the end at the last uh container type or it can be an in-between container type it doesn't necessitate that we always go down to a simple value but at any p in any in any case at this point we want uh, this get and set functions to return or set the variant at this place in the hierarchy of our mm, multi-level object and the last part 3 is completely optional so the part 3 of of the assignment is completely a bonus pro bonus task so you can do it you don't have to um, and what uh, it is it is uh, to implement a, a function or well, it probably will be more than one function, rather a set of functions to save and load such complex uh, variants with sub-elements from and to a file or rather to and from a file um, and my suggestion, so in principle you can use any file format you want you can invent your own if you like but uh, I would suggest to either go with JSON or with Ben code um, JSON is more difficult to parse than Ben code, but it is something that you know from JavaScript. So um, it, it basically stands for JavaScript Serialized Object Notation, um, and it is flexible enough that it can at least hold of uh, all the basic types 
although it does not differentiate between them really so it just is it a number or is it not a number and for our use case integers will be just as integer while a floating point number even if it doesn't have decimals will be always uh, written out as dot zero to ensure that when reading it again from the file we know whether it was an integer type or a floating point type uh, strings are just strings um, how JSON explicitly looks you can research it I can show you a very short well, I mean, wait, I can also write it down. So basically, you start with square brackets, then you give the name of the key. Uh, let's say, or let's go with the upper example, key one. Then you have a double point, and then you write whatever th uh, you have here. If you have an array, and so so either you would just write, you don't have an array, you just have a number, so you just write the number, or you write the string. And if you have a container type object, then if it's if it's another uh, map, then it's again curly brackets, and if it's an array, then it's just um, square brackets. And the array does not have a uh, key, so it's just uh, will contain either just numbers or things, or another array or or another object without a name. But in the case of the example from the above, uh, we at zero should have something that will have a um, key two, which will be again something that has a key three, and so on and so on and so on. So, so this is basically basically how how JSON looks. Uh, you can um, look it up in the internet. There are, there are more than enough resources available uh, from the, uh, for example. Um, just to provide one ref one one possible uh, source of reference, um, there is even perfect. Very good. Uh, this website I will post it in the chat. Where is the chat? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, shows you not just a. It, it 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 is a really ver verbose explanation. And so it's this website here of how JSON is structured and how to pass it. And it's um, probably even more sophisticated than you need because uh, I mean string escape. Yeah, it 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 will be more sophisticated probably than what you will need. But of course, if you implement full function full JSON functionality, that would be most appreciated. Mm. And band code is a not really human readable um, file format, but it's almost human readable. Um, it is used by different networking protocols sometimes, and uh, it is much easier to pass because you don't really have to um, pass strings. So the problem, the main issue with JSON is that, um, except for within a string, it does not care about white spaces. For example, so that's like one problem. So you can have line breaks, <laughs> spaces, stuff like that. Uh, which uh, then, when passing, you need to advance past and just ignore them. Mm. Also, uh, when you are generating the file, so the keys in a object can be in a random order, which for us would not really matter. Um, but for different applications, it, it might not be great. The, po the point is, if you convert something to JSON, there is not just one valid representation, but there is a bunch of valid representations. Uh, while with band code, um, if you convert something to band code, it it is there is al always exactly one valid representation for any given input. Uh, so it makes passing much easier. And if you are comparing things, uh, you don't need to compare them like element by element, but you can just compare them in the encoded uh, form, and you know that if they are equal, they are equal, and if they are not, they are not. While uh, two things which are the same in JSON in the encoded form might still compare as non-equal. Um, yeah. And of course, uh, one more no note to part two. If you can, as a bonus assignment, also implement your own uh, container type instead of using the st STD one. But as said, it's optional. You don't need to do that. Um, yeah. Are there any questions about the assignment? Is it clear uh, to you? Is it not enough? Is it too much? I 
Yes? Mm-hmm. Uh. Uh. Um, let, let's see on the calendar. So, the we, we are now. Then there is the next one. Well, there are only two more lectures, so there is not much room for planning, anyways. Um, but yeah, I guess um, I can. So if, if if the others are fine with it, I can move the presentation of the homework solutions to the last lecture, the twenty third. Uh, so you would have time. You would have three weeks from now time to hand in what's still missing. Because we have one lecture next week, then there is Frau Leichnam, so there's a holiday, and then we have the last lecture. I think the best strategy will be to uh, show you as much as I can during the next time, also the uh, STD containers, and we and let's just say that we'll make all the homework presentation uh, solution uh, demo on the 23rd, and that and since that's the last uh, lecture, anyways, um, that's the late that's as late as it can be, anyway. So so there is no need for planning in detail. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, but then then the deadline will be next week because the the day in between is a holiday. Um. Okay. Um. for the solutions. Okay, so we have two to one. Um, okay, so I think what, what is reasonable is that I will... Um, let's, let's see what, what the homework was and how much is not turned in. Because I guess it would be probably good to at least present some of it during the next time, but hopefully not as much as that to be a problem for those that have not turned in yet everything. So, um, um, so ideally you should uh, uh, deliver it up to the 30th of uh, June. So on, the, uh, on that day, since, I mean, it's still part of the last month, but apparently uh, the university did not foresee a lecture at this day anyway. So until this day, and from then I think uh, I have two weeks to give you grades. So ideally you should ha really uh, ha hand it in by the end of this month. And uh, if you are one week late, that is okay. If you are two weeks late, uh, people will uh, start asking me where is your grade. So being two weeks late is not great. <laughs> um, as simple as that. Okay, but let's see the homework. So the first homework was um, really trivial, so that we can do next time. The next homework was... Um, also really, that was also really trivial, so we should do that next time as well, the last, uh, the middle one. Um, yeah, we can do that as well. The next one was, uh, okay, so how about, I present next time homeworks uh, from the start up to and including the homework with the simple list. 
Um, or does anyone still needs to turn that one in? Okay. Um, what else do we have homework wise? Uh, Um okay. And how about what as homework? So the next one that we had was already the uh Dings Boom Star uh tree list which I guess we can leave out for the over next time and the last homework was the C buffer, okay. Um so any preference whether I should show the solution to the um hash table homework um next time already or or on the last lecture I don't think it will bring that much to help with the final project uh because the most most things that will be relevant for the final project are rather to well answering maybe the simplest and of course the string thing is I made during uh, today's lecture and what I also will do during the last lecture um after showing the solution to the to the string uh, sim to the simple list assignment is I will convert this it from a C implementation so something that doesn't really use objects except structs to a C++ implementation so something that um, can be handled as a nice object and is self-contained um, yeah that's that and I think this would be helpful with the variant stuff as well because it shows you m a bit more about how to work with objects and things like that. Yeah, I guess we have a plan. Um, yeah. Okay, so if there are no more questions, we can uh, finish for today. Or are there any more questions? Well, apparently not. Then have a nice evening. Bye-bye.